So the reunion basically started off with talking about Monica and her mama. And I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to believe when it comes to Monica and her mom, because it definitely seems like a setup. It definitely seems like Monica and her mom both have always wanted to be that girl. They've always wanted to be famous. They've always wanted to be on television. And now they're both getting their opportunity. And I think Monica has studied reality TV enough to know that she could not thrive in this space merely off of her arguments and tit or tats with the other women. She had to have something going on in her life that was going to be provocative and a relationship, a toxic relationship with a narcissistic mother is absolutely that. Okay. That's why there are five seasons of smothered. Okay. Because people love to see, you know, weird relationships between parents and children. And I don't know if I can believe everything that Monica and her mom are showing to us. Specifically, when we talk about if her mom ruined Monica meeting with the family in Bermuda. Now, the Bermuda side of the family is supposed to be her father's side of the family. Her father who just up and left when she was a kid. But somehow, her mom was so upset that she could not film, she may have called and ruined it. Was it that? Do you really have family in Bermuda in the first fucking place? Like, when was the last time you saw these people? Girl, I don't know if I can believe anything that Monica is telling us as it pertains to her family dynamic. I, I just don't know if there are any Bermuda people. Okay? Her mom left her when she was 12 years old so that she can go and pursue a career in television. So that should let you know that this is in their familial you know, life cycle thing to want to be famous, to want to pursue being in the limelight by any means. You will leave your child to go and pursue this. And I'm not, I'm not judging people who do do that because we know there are the K Michelles of the world that have left their kids with their parents so that they can go and pursue their careers. That's something you're going to have to deal with with that child, but it's your life. So no regrets. But ultimately, what we see now from Monica. Somebody, as Angie K said, willing to use her children's money to buy purses and to take a job that's not even a job because you're not getting paid so that you can be on the show. But you obviously are taking money, food, access out of your kids' mouths and hands because you want to be on television. You were willing to work for nothing and be taken away from them all so that you can get on television. As if that was supposed to help them instead of harm them when you, their mother, is being attacked and they may get attacked because of you. Like, it's just, it's not a good look to me. It's not a good example, as Angie K said, okay? Also, Monica's mama is on Twitter talking shit, saying Monica did her dirty and Monica is a bully who has manipulated her and bullied her for 16 years. And I'm like, so your daughter has been bullying and manipulating you for 16 years. Is that what you want us to believe? All that gaslighting you did on this fucking show? And you want us to believe that Monica has been bullying you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, mm, mm. <laughs> I don't know if Monica made that up. I don't know if that's some bullshit that her, her mama coming to us with. But no, I'm not going to believe that either way, girl. I'm just not. Monica, she also said Monica provokes her, but she forgives her. And y'all ain't nothing worse than a parent that's been fucking over you your entire life, made you responsible for yourself and them. And then they turn around and tell you that they forgive you because you don't really fuck with them like that. I don't fuck with you like that because you weren't a good mother. That's why I don't fuck with you like that. What, what am I apologizing to you for? Girl, talking about you forgive her. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Yes, Botox wears off. Y'all know what I mean. Like, she hasn't gone and gotten anything, like, permanent done to herself. Talking about Pamela. Okay? But yes. When Monica told her she didn't do well on her audition for the show, her mom prayed that if it wasn't Monica, it would be her. And she would get it instead. Heather says, and you still filmed with her after that? And Monica says, well, at this point, it's just kind of normal for her to be biting off me and trying to steal my shine. She's still my mom. You know what I mean? Like, it's normal. Whitney understands. And Whitney shares with us that 
she has a toxic relationship with both her father and her mother at this point. Now, we've seen her father. I don't think we've ever seen her mother. But she says her mother was never really there for her. But they have a better relationship now that she and her father aren't speaking. And it seems as if Whitney's relationship with her father may have caused some issues between her and her mom. And y'all know that Whitney's dad is on drugs, right? So she's not talking to him right now because she kept trying to get him help and he really didn't want the help. So now that she and her dad aren't speaking, she and her mom are on better terms. Monica fell down some stairs at Angie's house when they were filming. Remember when they got into it and everybody's going back and forth and um, Monica was storming out the house and fell down the stairs. Monica said that she should sue her because there was no railing. Um, Meredith told her that she could take Angie's house. And even though Meredith tried to act as if she didn't say exactly that, but told her she could absolutely, you know, file a suit against her for not having a railing there. Um, as a safety hazard, I do believe that Meredith probably wanted to help Monica if she did want to press charges against Angie K because Angie K had called Meredith everything but a <laughs> child of God. So, yeah, they don't see it for each other. You want to talk about me? You want to call me a hoe? You want to do all of this shit that you're doing, talking about me, all because I insinuated something about your husband after you came for my neck, after you was running your mouth, screaming and howling about me being a hoe, and I ain't even say shit? That wasn't me? Oh, all right. And I really feel like Lisa put that battery in Angie's back. I feel like whenever Lisa wants to go at Meredith, she'll send Angie K at her instead. She did the same thing with Heather. I think that Lisa doesn't really like to get into fights and would much rather take the passive aggressive route with people. Whenever she starts to get into an actual verbal argument, she gets so nervous and, you know, just overheated. She starts talking fast. She doesn't know what the fuck she's saying. And then she ends up crying, like losing her shit and then crying. So, yeah, girl, girl. I, I can't stand Lisa. I'm going to just tell y'all, I do not like Lisa. And that's the reason why I didn't like Angie K. Because, I, girl, I don't like your friends. Because all your friends are like little puppets with your hand up their asses. I'm not, I'm not here for it. I don't like that type of dynamic between grown-ass women. Okay? But anyway. So, Monica is also counter suing because Angie was like, all she does is sue people. She sues people for a living. And Monica was like, shut up, bitch. Okay, bench warming ass bitch. When have I ever sued anybody? And Heather was like, you're suing me. So apparently Heather said that Monica was going to her spa and getting all of these things done and not paying her bills. And so Heather is suing her for her money and Monica is counter suing her. Girl, how you going to count to sue for some shit that you did? If you ain't pay that lady, you ain't pay that lady. And then she used a whole bunch of different names at Heather's establishment. Y'all know Heather has her med spa. So I was just kind of like, yeah, Monica, you're, you're giving scammer. You and your mom are giving scammer. Rodney is absolutely right. Heartbreakers, if y'all watch Rodney, Heartbreakers is one of my favorite movies growing up with Sigourney Weaver and Jennifer Love Hewitt. The, the scamming mother-daughter duo that would marry men of a particular age and either wait for them to die or set it up for them to cheat, get caught cheating so she can hurry up and divorce and get a settlement. Yeah. Okay, girl, it's a thing. It absolutely is a thing. But amongst wealthy men, <laughs> not you broke niggas that don't have anything, but swear up and down somebody's trying to take you for your 250 OK, like keep it in your account, sir. Keep it in your account. You're going to have to get groceries and gas. All right. Anyway, so Lisa started defending Angie K and then she throws Monica's mother in her face, which we knew she was going to do that. Monica, you know, is asked about all of her names and all of her aliases. And she tries to explain that she changed her name from her mom's name. And then she got married and then she went back to her original last name. Girl, I don't know. Monica is lying. She got all of them different last names because she's a scammer. They argue whether it was Lisa or Jen that said Monica was using different names to make herself seem more Latina. I think Lisa said it. I do. Um, but Lisa probably said what she heard Jen say. I'm going to say it like that. Then we find out Jack didn't go on his mission because his visa was rejected because he sent in a shirtless photo. And I'm just wondering if Jack really wanted to go on the mission in the first place or was he being pushed to do this? Like, 
I don't know what's going on in their family dynamic, but it's weird, especially when Lisa said how hot he looked because he worked really hard on his six pack. And that's why he sent the shirtless picture in to get his visa. Girl, y'all don't need to be going on missions anyway. I'm in total agreement with Heather on this. Nobody needs your godless white ass to be going to anybody's country to tell them about God. Nobody needs that anymore. It's it, it's not it's not the transatlantic slave trade. I don't know why y'all are still doing that. It's almost like elitism. Like because we do so well, we're going to we're going to use our money in our church and we're going to go and we're going to help the the downtrodden natives. And please don't get me wrong. I know there are places all over the world that need better health care, that need water, that need child that really needs somebody to come and pick up some trash up and around there okay it's a whole bunch of things that people need but i don't feel like it comes from a good place i think it comes from a place of pushing your coat on other people that's what i think you know one of the girls on tiktok that i watched i forgot her name but she has locks and she's she's gay and she's always doing really good commentary and one of the things that she said um, about Lil Nas X was that if church people don't want their religion to be mocked, made fun of, or commented on negatively, they should keep it amongst themselves. But the whole idea is for you to push your religion on other people. And then you get mad when other people create negative depictions of said religion. Like, <laughs> don't push it on other people then. So I really have a problem with the whole idea of missions. Um, if you want to go and, and do charity work, if you want to go and help people, fine. But giving them your white man religion in order to enslave their minds and their spirits. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm not playing this game with y'all. It's already dark over here with the way everybody won't let go of it in America. Like it is already it's already dark, girl. We don't need anybody else to continue down this line of taking on white people's religions and and being brainwashed into hating themselves by product. No thank you. Okay? They get into how the Mormon religion is racist when Mary comes out, okay? Because y'all know Mary don't see it for none of these girls, okay? And the truth of the matter is, Lisa, your religion is historically racist. I don't know what the fuck you talking about trying to defend it. Whitney and Heather kept it a buck at least. But Whitney was like, girl, don't call me racist just because I was Mormon because I'm no longer Mormon. OK, don't call me racist if you don't have a specific instance of me being racist towards you. And honestly, I'm not mad at Whitney for that. But at the same time, Whitney, weren't you a Trump supporter? It's some other things in there. It's some other things in there. I also feel like it's not even just about being Mormon. I think it's in this world and especially with being American because Americans are obsessed with color and obsessed with race um, more so than other countries. And they're very angry. Like this country is very angry. And so for me, I feel like it doesn't matter what you say. This country is built off of killing off the Native Americans and stealing their land and then bringing Africans over here to enslave and work like mules. Yeah, this country is absolutely built and, and threaded with blood and racism and sexism. And, and that's the fabric. That's the fabric. The fabric is, is Native and Black people's blood all up and fucking through. And it's the same thing with the Mormon religion that specifically had ideologies that said that black people will go to a servant heaven. Like the fuck a servant heaven word, Mormon people word. So yeah, I, I, I definitely feel like American white people in America profit off of racism, white privilege, no matter what they do or what they say, they have to make a conscious effort to not be racist in order to not be racist. It has to be a conscious effort. It can't just be, oh, I'm just not. No, because innately you are. Whether you want to believe it or not, you are because you live in a system that is racist and you turn a blind eye and you explain things away and you act as if it's not your problem because it's essentially you feel like it's not your problem. 
That's how people are. And especially uh, the people on this show. Girl. At least we got in. Child, I wish the fuck I would be happy to go serve some white people in heaven. Girl, go to hell. That does not sound like heaven. <laughs> okay, well, what does hell look like? Okay? Because I don't want to go if that's what it's going to be. Mm-mm. Send me back down here. Anyway, um, they also discussed how Mary <laughs> told her son's wife slash girlfriend because she still hasn't seen a marriage certificate to stop faking because she walked past their room and she was doing all of this hooping and hollering and she was like girl please don't make my son think he's doing anything more than what he really is i love that that shit was hilarious okay but she still got them two 20 something year old 22 year old people living in her house and fucking loudly i would have definitely told that little girl hey hey little girl stop with all of that making all that fucking noise in my house Get your own house if y'all want to have loud sex. Disrespectful ass little assholes. Anyway, y'all. So Mary feels like Heather was over the top kicking Monica off the trip. It was, but it was called for. It was, it was called for. It was absolutely called for. So I'm not really mad at Heather for being over the top, girl. It's a reality show. Give us something to chew on. <laughs> Get out of here. Go home. Oh my God, Heather. They say Heather's on those Olympic. That's why she's losing all of that weight. Oh, be careful, girl, because sometimes you got a big head and you got weight on your body for a reason. Just be careful, girl. Just be careful. All right. Take care of yourself, Heather. Um, I don't hate Heather. Like, I really don't like Lisa, but I don't really dislike Heather. You know what I'm saying? But Mary don't like her no more because she made comments about her house. And I'm like, Mary, shut the fuck up. You call that lady inbred. And yes, yeah, she was shading your ugly ass house, but oh well. Oh well. But I do respect what Mary was like. Hey, I said it to her face. Don't talk behind my back and act like you cool with me in my face. And I think that's really her issue with Heather, that she feels like Heather's fake. And I feel like Heather's fake too. Heather will do anything to be well received in a moment and then talk shit about you behind your back. She's not trustworthy. So I do understand why Mary does not like her. But at the same time, Mary, like, girl, tip a tat all fucking day. You say crazy shit to people and I don't know why um, you can't see, you know, that you say fucked up things to them and it gets back to them or you say it to their face. The shit that they say gets back to you. It doesn't matter. Y'all are saying fucked up shit about each other. So, please, if you want to say you don't like them, say you don't like them because you just don't like them. But don't make it about no stupid shit like Heather's comments about your house, which is over the top and tacky. I don't care how much money you have. Your house is fucking tacky. What we going to do? What we going to do? Fuck? Anyway, um, they play this clip where it sounds like Monica is calling Mary a dumb bitch. But I don't think that's what was being said. It sounded like Monica was talking about somebody else. And then she said, I'm going to DM Mary. But it didn't sound like she was calling Mary a dumb bitch. But Lisa and Heather have been pulling out audio recordings, all reunion, trying to prove, you know, Monica to be, you know, this reality blog infiltrator snake. And it's like, you proved it already. You proved it already. Why are we still pulling out audio recordings and shit? Like, I get it, but that one seemed cut in a in a way to make it look a certain way, even if it wasn't really that way. So I, I didn't like that. I really think they want Monica to be disliked by Mary so bad. And it's like, why? Why? Mary don't like you, Lisa. Mary don't like you, Whitney. Mary don't like you, uh, uh Heather. She says she actually likes Angie K because Angie K can handle her and you know doesn't do all of that woe is me I'm gonna cry bullshit and I think that's really why she doesn't like Lisa and Heather and Whitney because they like to throw rocks and then as soon as somebody comes back at them with that shit they like to cry and play victim and I'm not about to have you gaslighting me so that you can do the white woman thing that's why she's cool with Angie and that's also why she's trying to give Monica a chance because anybody that don't like these bitches I don't like them either so you may be somebody I can fuck with we gonna see OK, but I do believe Monica when she says that she's not the only person running reality bonties. I do believe that. And 
I appreciated when Mary said that they needed to hear her out instead of constantly talking over her because it did seem like they were trying to railroad her with that last clip. Y'all tell me what y'all think. But anyway, um, Heather is racist too. Child, I told y'all, I think all white people are racist. I don't know. I don't know, you know, whether it's conscious or subconscious. I think subconsciously, all white people are racist unless they have it in their minds to make a conscious effort to not show up in the world that way. And I do feel like there are white people who like make a conscious effort to not be that way. I do think that. But I also feel like there's an even larger number of y'all that like to stick your heads in the sand and act like it doesn't bother you or it's not happening. Hey, Talia, big time. Even the good ones display their privilege in situations like arguing with cops, taking liberties with no concern of consequences the way a melanated person has to consider them. Absolutely. I remember one Asian American dude that is Christian went to convert one of the few population that wasn't colonized in Asia. They ended his life. Shout out to the Asians. Um, but the love one another doctrine of every religion is conveniently overlooked constantly and without fail, <laughs> constantly and without fail. Heather is a racist. She fetishizes black men. Oh, not anymore. She cleaned that shit up. Joseph Smith was called a prophet. Dumb, 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 dumb. Ah, South Park. <laughs> it's recruiting. We all know it is. Indoctrination, brainwashing, enslavement of the cult. Who are they to decide that the religion you practice is bad and will lead you to going to hell? That's another thing I don't like. How the fuck you going to tell me? Because y'all, historically, a person's God is representative of them, their family, and their people. So when you give people somebody else's God, it's detrimental to their self-esteem. I know people don't realize that, but it's very true. You seeing God as a white man is detrimental to how you see yourself. Your God should look like you. That's how I feel about it, okay? And so because I feel like your God should look like you, whenever somebody is coming to give you their God, they're basically giving you them to worship because that's how that's going to translate. It's the God in me. OK, and, and we're not talking about a white man that that's inside of me. OK, white women do it all the time. Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. Oh, she's talking about uh, Centennial Island, the last island on Earth to be truly untouched by the rest of the world. Asian dude got killed because every time they engage with us, two to three of the colonies dies. Oh, listen, and they should. They should. I think that anytime somebody go over there off with their fucking head my god is definitely black all right my uncle has had a white girlfriend for over 30 years and she is family trump movement and there were like some surprises that we never expected girl i don't <laughs> i don't know what surprises you couldn't expect but y'all i listen don't put nothing past nobody always the ones with the private pages always the ones with the private pages i think those are rage baiting troll pages. Uh, I like boobs, but those yeah, they are that guy. Yeah, <laughs> I like boobs, but those '90s boobs and they were just so fucking big in the '90s. The titties were so big; they were just on swole for no reason in the '90s. <laughs> Goddamn Baywatch. But anyway, y'all, that's basically everything that went down on both shows. I feel like I've been here long enough. I'm supposed to be going out in a little while, so I'm gonna leave it here. Um, but we do have another part to this reunion, I believe. So I will definitely have another um, live with these. And then moving forward, um, we'll see what I do with Love & Hip Hop. Love & Hip Hop might stay behind the paywall if I get another show to put with it. Or I might add it to the Bondi Blue show. Or I might add it like a Sunday Love & Marriage Huntsville thing. We'll just see. Because Love & Marriage Huntsville and Bell Collective are about to go away. Um, I know DC is coming back. Um so, you know, we'll have that. But I'm I'm not into Ready to Love anymore, y'all. I know Ready to Love just started a new season. And I was just like, yeah, no, thank you. No, thank you. Enough is enough. But, yeah, I love you guys. I appreciate y'all so much for coming through. I hope y'all enjoy y'all weekend. And I will talk to y'all in the next one. Peace out.